There are two things that surprised me about using the Surface Go 2. One almost made me throw it out and another makes this machine absolutely amazing for a small group of people. I'll explain in just a bit. I'm reviewing the $400 model whereas most reviewers were sent the $630 one that has twice the RAM and storage and is also faster, but I wanted to go with the base since I think that most people will be really attracted to the Go 2 because of that price point. Of course, that is just the tablet by itself, so add on another $100 for the cheaper keyboard and another hundred for the Surface Pen, and it's no longer as inexpensive as it seems. The tablet itself is built mostly out of aluminum and it feels really nice, especially for the price. The kickstand is built super well and it works great. Microsoft has been doing a killer job with our kickstands and this thing works really well with a lot of adjustability. I love that we have a built-in micro SD card reader. For only about 50 bucks, you can more than quadruple the base storage. I'll go ahead and leave a link to my recommended cheap and fast micro SD card in the description below. As far as ports, we have a headphone jack, a USB type C port at full 10 gigabit per second speeds, which is awesome. And the Surface Connect port that is used for charging with the included 24 watt fast charger or for using Microsoft's pricey proprietary accessories like the new Travel Hub or the Surface Dock 2, which I'll link to down below. On the front, we have a 10 and a half inch screen that's decent. It's not as sharp or bright as Apple's cheapest iPad at about 350 nits, which means it is prone to reflections in bright rooms and outdoors. One thing I definitely have to complain about are the speakers. I was excited for the dual front facing speakers, but they are so quiet. I went through all the settings and they can't even compete with current smartphones or the cheapest iPad that only has bottom firing speakers. Take a listen for yourselves. Another issue I found was the Windows Hello Facial Authentication. I love laptops that include this, and I'm glad to see that the Go 2 does as well, but it is really finicky in lower light conditions. About half the time in you know the evening with the lights turned on in my room, it just won't work and I have to use the pin. The Surface Laptop 3 doesn't have this issue, so I really hope that it's just software and it can be improved. One of the selling points is being able to write and draw on the display, and it works okay. I say that because just like the display, even the cheapest iPad does a much better job with drawing because it has much less lag and the app selection is so much greater. Now if you're somebody that does a lot of typing, the experience is surprisingly good. Microsoft was one of the first to make keyboard covers with trackpads and though it's not the best, the cover we bought was only $99 so for the price it is fantastic. Because the cover didn't change, you can even pick it up for cheaper which I'll link to below. The keys are a bit small but that's fairly common at this size and you do get used to them after a day or two. The keys themselves have decent travel and feel good. Before we get into why I almost threw it out, let's talk about the most shocking thing I found while using it and that is the webcam. I don't know how Microsoft managed to put in such a high quality 1080p webcam and great microphones into a $400 tablet. Apple's most expensive MacBook Pro webcam is 720p and the quality of the image is blown away by the Go 2. The post processing and colors are good, we have a nice detailed image with very little noise and on top of that there are two front facing microphones that pick up voices very well. Bravo Microsoft and Apple, please take notes. Battery life is quite poor though. I got four to five hours for basic mixed use, but thankfully it charges in just over an hour with included charger and standby time was also good. And now for the biggest downside, the performance. Now sure, I know I have the base model, but that was on purpose. Out of the box, it ships in balanced power mode, but that is way too slow, so I had to keep it in the maximum performance mode to even be usable. It also comes in Windows S mode, but in order to use most apps, even basic ones like Zoom, you'll have to change to regular Windows, which thankfully is easy and free. Once Windows is loaded, the performance is sluggish, but usable. Opening up Adobe's more optimized mobile version of Lightroom from the Microsoft Store took over 20 seconds compared to two seconds on the iPad. 
Now I keep comparing it to the iPad since even though they're using different operating systems, they're both in the same price point and have a similar audience. The actual editing experience was very slow, even with small JPEG files, so raw editing is a no-go. Many other apps are also slow for me, so I think that the base go-to is really only usable with simple web tasks. With only a few tabs open, the performance was noticeably slower than a basic iPad or laptop, with things taking longer to load even though it has fast Wi-Fi 6. I ran a web browser benchmark and the results explained why it felt so slow. It scored three times slower than the slowest iPad and that is in the best performance mode. Now with some patience, it could still be usable unless Windows is running some background task. I was in YouTube Studio and my blood basically started to boil because the Go slowed down so much that it took 20 seconds or more to open a web page and at times it even failed to open. I had left my laptop at the office as I typically do when reviewing new devices so I had no choice but to use it and it took me 15 minutes to do what I normally can do in 5 minutes or less and by the end of that I was just so tempted to throw it out the window that was open next to me. Not only does the base model have shockingly low performance scores being smoked by the cheapest iPad, which by itself uses an old CPU from 2016, but adding on full-fledged Windows really puts a huge toll on it. As soon as you have a few apps open or more than just a few tabs, or as in my case, just having some background task open that I wasn't able to control, it just slows the whole thing down to a crawl. Now there is a core M3 option to speed things up, but there are two issues. First, that costs an extra $230 and then adding the keyboard and possibly a pen makes it a much more expensive purchase. The second is that even with the best CPU option, it is barely faster than the 4 year old A10 and it doesn't have the luxury of having a well optimized OS, so it will still be a slow machine and have poor performance for the money. My biggest issue with the Go 2 is I feel like Microsoft shouldn't be selling the base model. I understand wanting to hit that low price point which will sell well, but shipping it with a processor that is basically unusable at times is super frustrating. This would have been a much more compelling device if they kept the base storage and RAM but used the M3 processor, even if that meant having a slightly higher price point. I still think that the Go 2 could be a fantastic machine for those that value portability and mostly do a lot of web conferencing and also a decent machine if you want to do basic tasks and occasionally require a machine that has Windows, but I would really strongly compel anyone that is considering it to spend that extra $230 for the Core M3 model, even though that is a really high price to pay just to have usable, consistent performance. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Of course, we do have links to uh, the go to the accessories and some great prices for the keyboards down in the video description. You guys can click that circle above to subscribe if you guys want to see more videos. And if you want to see a comparison to the basic iPad with a keyboard case with the trackpad, click right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.